Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range. Today we're going to be talking about leather. So, why did some countries predominantly use leather, such as this uh, lovely Swiss six pocket bandolier here, uh, for their belt kit, and others use webbing? Now, anyone that's worked with the leather outdoors will tell you that, my lord, it attracts mildew. You get the slightest bit of moisture on this and don't deal with it, mildew all over the place. Horrible stuff. Webbing, not so much. Now, some of this is just simple logistics, that for instance in Switzerland, Germany, massive numbers of cows, leather is sourceable. There's no, or practically no, uh, cotton grown in, uh, in Central Europe, so uh, you've got to source your cotton from overseas. The Brits had the advantage of having an empire where cotton was grown, so they could get cotton. And uh, America, cotton picking and all that, down in the south, you had that. So. Uh, it's obvious why these countries sort of went for webbing, except not so much, not always. Because in the British experience, the uh, 1888 Slade Wallace equipment was leather. And in the Boer War, uh, the equipment was predominantly the Slade Wallace gear, uh, coloured white with uh, pipe clay. And uh, there was a certain amount of flimsy canvas, disposable, webbing bandoliers that ended up being reused and uh, left cartridges all over the place for the Boers to pick up. So there was a massive prejudice against webbing after the Boer War amongst the British High Command. So the first set of webbing equipment or carrying equipment after this was the 1903 pattern, which was a leather pattern. Uh, wasn't popular, went over to 1908 pattern, which was canvas, made by the Mills Cartridge Company. Now. Canvas, heavy canvas webbing has an advantage that is much, much more resistant to mildew. Uh, fundamentally, leather, when it gets wet, it gets horrible, it gets slimy, it gets ugh, nasty. Uh, you've got to dry it away from flames, away from sources of heat, and, uh, and it's a real pain to take care of. Uh, canvas webbing, on the other hand, as long as you dry it out and don't leave it chronically damp, it's nowhere near as, as mildew and uh, rot prone as leather. Now, when the First World War kicked off, or as Matthias would say, when war were declared in 1914, etc, 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 there wasn't enough capacity to supply enough pattern 08 webbing, so uh, the leather manufacturers, who'd been kind of left out of the picture once the 08 pattern was brought in, uh, had spare capacity and produced the 14 pattern equipment and the idea was that this was just going to be used in training. Uh, if you don't know what all these patterns are I'll put a link in the description below to a website that is totally geek and I love it. It explains in great detail all the different equipments and accoutrements of the British Army up to, well, I think they go as far as 57 pattern, sorry 58 pattern. Um, now Webbing in the British Army was typically uh, coloured with Blanco, which was this sort of chalky powder that was mixed up with water into a paste and then sort of painted on, used to make a uniform colour, colour it according to your branch of the service, and then basically clean it by colouring over the dirt and crap that you couldn't clean off. Uh, leather, on the other hand, not so easy. I mean, you, can, you can polish it with boot polish. Um, yeah. It kind of works. Uh, problem is, most preparations you put on leather end up colouring it and up darkening it. Uh, and the great problem with leather is protecting it from the elements because water, as I mentioned, mildew, it's just it's just nasty stuff. Now, what I'm going to do with the help of these uh, leather thongs here and this is show you the uh, Swiss solution and I'll bring the camera around so you get a closer look. Okay, so the Swiss solution to protecting and cleaning leather was actually to uh, wax it with a fairly hard wax. Uh, this has several advantages over uh, cleaners and conditioners in that it doesn't uh, darken the leather much. It nourishes it without making it darker than it already is particularly. Um, and it produces a uh, re relatively polishable surface that's relatively weather resistant. Now I say relatively weather resistant, but 
Uh, this, for instance, I managed to pick this up cheap because it had been left in a cellar somewhere and it had superficial mildew all over it. Um, it looked quite nasty, so the guy gave it to me for an absolute song and I knew that all I had to do was uh, freshen it up with uh, some of this stuff and it would be, uh, well, doesn't look bad and certainly for the price I paid for it, it's not bad at all. Now, uh, I've got a block that's already open here and I've no idea what's in it. It seems to be some sort of microcrystalline wax uh, in a cardboard thingy that you can uh, peel back. And if I start on these these uh, new unissued Czech, or Czechoslovakian technically, uh, leather straps, which I've bought, and the first time I used them they started uh, cracking a bit up there, so I thought, okay, we'll, uh, we'll wax these at least on the smooth side. That should uh, soften them up, but as you can see, there's no change in the colour. Now, if I just, as an example, I take this uh, American boot conditioner here, and if I just dab a little bit of this on the end here, you can see pretty immediately that it darkens the leather. If I rub that in, you can see how that goes quite a bit darker and the more you use that the darker and darker it will it will get now this might not be a problem but it's uh it's up to you I mean, part of the part of the theory behind this stuff is that it doesn't do that um i've seen this in several colors i've seen it in a sort of yellow beeswaxy color and then you've got this um this kind of uh red color and all you do is you just rub it on like that and then give it a polish and you've nourished it without any major problems. Spend as much time on that as you want. And uh, once you've worked that in, it will all be nice and supple and in theory weather protected. And you can also do it on the, uh, on the flesh side if you want. You see a lot of you see a lot of original belt kit where they've uh, heavily waxed the flesh side. It just protects it nicely. Oh, that's gone dark there because I was using a dirty corner because I wasn't paying attention because I was looking at the camera. Let's try it with a clean bit. Okay. Now here we've got some Swiss utility straps I picked up that are in. Mm, okay condition you can see from the shape they're in that they're a bit on the dry side and what I'd really like to do is resupple these up now I've previously cleaned off uh, superficial mildew it was a bit there still just by rubbing it with a rag that's got a tiny bit of wax all over it now what you can do here with this wax if I get something uh, clean so I don't get it all in my tablecloth we can be a little bit more aggressive. Now this is quite nasty anyway. So if we wanted to, we could clean and condition it with this first. But uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna slap a whole bunch of this on. I'm probably gonna have to time lapse this. Whole bunch of this on. And then we're gonna get it right into the structure of the leather on both sides. But first of all, we have gotta get a load of it on. Q high speed. Okay, I've given that a good liberal coating. Now we take the hairdryer. And the cloth. And we melt it. Now you'll notice that this does darken the leather when you melt this, uh, but this is all blotchy and horrible anyway, and uh, I'd rather have it darker, more uniform, um, and nourished rather than lighter and blotchy and yeah.
Oh, yes. Now, once you've done this, you can uh, let it cool off and polish it up, and you can just see how much more supple this leather is than it was before. Now, so if you do that, your leather is at least vaguely protected from the elements, and nowhere near as good as uh, canvas webbing still, but better than a poke in the eye with a pointy stick. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe, like our Facebook page, and I hope to see you again on the range sometime. Bye!